is a presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to Mike in Southern California. Hey, Mike, what's going on? Hey, Tom, nice to talk to you again. And I have to start out and first tell you, I love this trading room. This thing is great. This app, it works great. And uh, getting all the information, it, you're like instantly there. No delay, nothing. That's I know. Great. I Listen, Thank I you appreciate again. your growling problem with us. Your channel is in my pocket all day long. It's wonderful. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, man. You Thank you. Now, Tom O'Brien. Welcome, folks. It's Jacob Shoup again, filling in for Tom O'Brien. Uh, let's take a look at what we got going on right now. So we're kind of trading a little bit down right now in the S-mini. Uh, of course, in the day, we had a pretty steady decline uh, from open. Then we shot back up around about 1230. And then we're coming back down again, probably testing the lows of the day again. Uh, let's take a look. The Russell is off about 0.78% right now, trading at 1967 and 30 cents. NQ's at 17,675, off about 1.15%. The Dow futures kind of sideways currently, uh, trading right under that 38,000 mark. And the gold contact, uh, contract, we're actually off a little bit uh, right now as well, trading at 2,388.90. Silver up uh, modestly. And then copper as well, getting back to that 434 area, which was nice. It was a little disheartened to see it uh, kind of come down from around the 435, but we're right back up there. Uh, take a look at crude oil, how about this, right? So down right now at 312, excuse me, down at 312, about 82.70. Um, oh, there's a lot of conversation, and I've been talking about it too, how I was concerned with some of the global outlook and uh, conflict we've been seeing around uh, the world. And then additionally, um, with the reintroduction of embargo against Venezuelan oil, um, how, how this is going to impact, of course, the price of crude and really by extension energy and then and then really uh, affect CPI. And what we found is that some of the supplies uh, from the U.S. Are, are kind of outweighing the demand on all of that, which is pretty fantastic uh, going forward. And of course, the Brent is down moderately as well. All the bonds are up slightly. Tesla trading at 156.82. Uh, one of the headlines I saw is that uh, Kathy Woods continues to buy Tesla even down at these levels. And that is some pretty strong conviction, I would say. Still Dynamics trading at 138.90, and then the dollar back down below that 106 level, trading at 105.97. Google at 157, uh, of course, Meta just under that 500 right now, and the Disney trading at 113. You know, let's be, let's just talk about what's going on. In is that Powell comes out and says that rate cuts will likely come later than expected. And I think this is interesting because, one, I had I kind of assumed that this might happen. But then, two, you know, it's, we've, we went through, I mean, over a decade of quantitative easing with just constant money being injected into the market. And, you know, this idea, some, and then again, you know, additionally with supply chain disruptions because of COVID and all that, and this idea that maybe in, in a year or a little bit over that we would you know, kind of combat inflation effectively to the point where we could go back down to lower rates. Uh, I don't know. I, Of course, I was in the minority thinking that, um, but it seems like this uh, might stay the case for a little bit longer. Uh, Powell said legitimately lack of further progress uh, on inflation means that central bank likely won't cut interest rates at its upcoming policy meeting just two weeks away. We kind of knew this. We knew this going into May as well. Now there's discussion that this might not even happen in June or even July. Uh, meanwhile, the two-year Treasury yield topped 5% on Tuesday before retreating below the threshold uh, to about 4.96. I think the average mortgage rate as well is trading about 7.15. Of course, trading, it's at 7.15%, uh, which is pretty high. And the question is, too, is when you start cutting rates, what do we go back down to? I mean, I totally do not foresee any circumstance where we go back to quantitative easing levels, uh, you know, at something like zero or close to that. I mean, do we settle at like 5%, 4%? And then how does the market shake out from that? 
it'll be interesting to see what, what kind of happens. So this is the recent data has not given us uh, greater confidence. It is likely to take longer than expected to achieve that confidence right now, given the strength of the labor market and progress on inflation so far. It's appropriate to allow restrictive policy further time to work and let the data and the evolving outlook guide us. And I think you've seen that too, where you've seen some cash flow going into bonds um, and kind of other like fixed income like that as well. Anyways. We'll have, to, we'll have to see, of course, what the next CPI uh, report is. And of course, that job market is still really strong. And I have said this a few times before, um, but I do think that we're kind of in a new, not a new, I, I mean, there, there's a lot of new stuff going on in, in the economy, and I, I think there's some major structural changes happening. Uh, but I, I wonder if this, again, this approach that the Fed has, which is really f to control demand side, um, you know, kind of metrics, is that going to, you know, be effective going forward? You know, this a lot of this problem again with supply chains, right? And so they're trying to, you know, balance everything by decreasing demand. But was that really the issue? And we're, I mean, we're seeing at least in the job market that the economy needs more workers, um, and they're they're comfortable with that. Uh, so you know, is increasing the unemployment rate, which in effect is going to have a, you know, influence on demand. Uh, is that really the way to do it? I'm not sure, um, but it's kind of what the Fed has going right now. And I'd be interesting to see, you know, years down the line, kind of what the, the way they, they, they've changed their approach to it. Uh, of course, let's, let me pull this up when I can get it loaded. <clears throat> Here we are, fantastic. You know, I like uh, Steel Dynamics a lot. I talk about it. Um, one of the interesting things, this is a new story coming out, is Biden is seeking actually higher tariffs on Chinese steel. We can talk a little bit about this, not only just steel, but aluminum as well. Uh, they're going to protect American producers from a flood of cheap imports and will pitch his election year plan uh, during a visit Wednesday with steel workers in Pennsylvania. This is, he said this today, the current tariff is 7.5% uh, for both steel and aluminum. Uh, but there's some suggestion that it could climb up to 22.5%. Uh, uh, additionally, with this, you've had, uh, give me one moment here. If I can pull it up. You've had discussions at pretty high levels, um, you know, at least in policy decision making. Here we go. This is the U.S. Trade Representative Catherine Tai on Wednesday as well. She said she expects to include a review on tariffs on Chinese goods uh, very soon. And this is going to be an action, essentially, to shield the EV sector uh, from China. You know, I, I wonder if America really is trying to pivot back into, you know, I, you know, I suppose more industrial output, right? That kind of gets shot in the 80s, but you're seeing it come back with chip manufacturing. And I think really to remain competitive with the amount of people that we have in this nation, uh, it, it's going to be something like, you know, production of these kind of cutting edge things. I would say EV. Um, and Elon Musk had said it pretty succinctly a few months ago, where it's like, if we don't do anything about China, they're gonna flood the market. And you can see Volkswagen now going and basically outsourcing to China to produce their EVs. So anyways, folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Uh, we have a guest on in the next break. Stay tuned. spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, 
it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. Uh, we were actually joined today uh, by Elliot Wellenbach. He's Senior Vice President over at Direction Institutional ETF Sales and Capital Markets Strategist. Uh, Elliot, how are you doing? Good, Jacob. Uh, excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Fantastic. You know, there's uh, quite a bit going on, actually. I, I want to start off first um, just kind of looking at what you got over here at DPST. Uh, this is the Daily Regional Bank's bull three times shares. Now, of course, we had a lot of stuff come out with earnings, uh, of course, with Bancorp and uh, Citibank. I'm just curious if you can give us a little insight in, uh, you know, this is the three times leveraged uh, bull ETF. Um, you, you know, it's funny, before we even begin, I, I want to say um, it, it, it's been funny. Years ago, um, I had traded uh, in Gush and Drip, and I had, you know, I was a young guy. And, uh, you know, trying to learn and get my footing in it. And I, I really found that using these were just, uh, it really changed kind of my strategies, which I thought was really impressive. So. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. Uh, yes. Most of our products are leverage and inverse uh, short term tactical trading tools. Very powerful. Um, you know, very important to monitor. Um, but yeah, no, as you mentioned, regional banks, uh, I mean, the financials, uh, you know, kind of kick off Q1 earnings. Uh, they did uh, last week um, and, uh, you know, really Q1 earnings season has continued this week. Um, the regional banks, uh, about 40 percent of that basket um, is reporting this week. Um, and as you mentioned, DPST is our triple leveraged ETF. Um, off of the regional bank select sector. Um, and, you know, we've seen kind of, uh, you know, mixed earnings coming out of the regional banks. Mm -hmm. uh, the NII, uh, you know, the net uh, interest income uh, is definitely something that has been watched um, with higher rates, especially with the regional banks being, you know, a little bit more sensitive uh, to uh, higher rates uh, in their core business as opposed to, you know, some of the, you know, larger, uh, you know, banks and uh, financials uh, that have, you know, broader, uh, you know, areas of their business that, sure. that they can rely on where the regional banks really, um, you know, are impacted by that uh, NII. Uh, so, it's been it's definitely been interesting and um you know even in the the broader financials that you mentioned you know we've seen goldman uh city jp morgan wells fargo uh, bank of america they've already all reported um in and, and those are all part of the financial select sector so those are the you know the larger uh financial banks um and financial uh companies within the us as opposed to the regionals that are going to be your smaller regional players 
um, but that basket as well. Um, we have a triple leveraged um, uh, ETF off of that, uh, the financial select sector, FAS, and a triple inverse as well, FAZ. Yeah. Um, and that basket's already reported as well, 40% uh, so far, uh, starting off Friday of last week and then through this week. And we've even see, uh, seen um, you know the the higher rate environment impacting uh, you know their net at interest income uh, even when they have you know businesses that um, you know can help support um, you know their broader business when um, you know, instead of just uh, you know looking at um, you know loans um, and you know uh, also just uh, you know that interest that they're they have to pay back to uh, to uh, you know people holding uh, money with them. Yeah, and, and taking a look, too, at the financial bull and bear. Again, that's FAS and FAZ. Um, but you can see here, too, obviously, the top 10 holdings. You got Berkshire, JP Morgan, Visa, MasterCard, and Bank, and so on. And then you have these index sector weightings as well. And this will, you know, this is the case for all the leverage shares, uh, leverage ETFs that Direction provides as well. Um, and so I had a, actually a pretty good time sitting here and uh, looking through a lot of these uh, before the show as well. Um, you know, into that as well, we had United Healthcare, of course, uh, report earnings as well. Uh, they did all right. And you guys have a healthcare bull three times uh, leverage as well. I mean, what's the major composite in that? That's Lilly, United Health Group, Johnson & Johnson. Of course, uh, Lilly coming out with some interesting news, too, uh, with ZepBound being uh, effective actually for sleep apnea, too. So if you could tell us a little bit about Cure and, and what we're looking at with that. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, that's another, uh, you know, larger percentage of uh, the healthcare select sector um, or, uh, you know, triple leverage ETF cure um, that uh, is off of that. Um, you know, it's been uh, a little bit mixed uh, for the healthcare sector. Sure. Approximately 20 percent of uh, that basket is reported uh, so far this week. Um, you know, we saw Abbott, uh, you know, that's part of that uh, uh, index. Mm -hmm. uh, they beat, uh, raised their annual profit forecast. And as you mentioned, uh, Eli Lilly, uh, they're, <laughs> they're not reporting for uh, another week and a half. Uh, so that's, that's uh, the largest uh, holding within uh, Cure and in that sector. Um, and it's going to be pretty interesting. Um, you know, a lot has been going on the past year with, uh, you know, the weight loss drugs, um, you know, the demand for that. Um, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see how, um, you know, sales and growth in that uh, space for not only Eli Lilly, but, um, you know, a handful of those, you know, large uh, healthcare uh, names in that sector, um, how that's going to impact their earnings. Because um, there's been a lot of, uh, you know, kind of hype around that and also, uh, you know, demand from the consumer as well. Absolutely. And, you know, at, at the, the price that Eli Lilly trades at right now, you know, we're at 749 a share. This is a great way, uh, especially with Cure, to get exposure to, I mean, listen, Eli Lilly, I think, is, is poised fantastically, right? ZepBound is even going through a supply uh, kind of choke right now, um, which is only going to drive up the cost for it. And a lot of times I, you know, I mean, something like 749 a share for Eli Lilly is a little bit prohibitive for a lot of people. And so to get exposure to that stock in something like this, um, you know, I, I think is, is fantastic as well. That's, that's what I find so neat uh, with, with a lot of these uh, leveraged ETFs. Um, yep. Great way to trade around uh, earnings short term. Um, you know, as you mentioned, you know, if you're looking for concentrated exposure but don't want to be trading that, you know, just that individual name, you know, it's a great way to get a basket, um, you know, through a totally. you know, leverage ETF there for short term trading. And, you know, one of the big things, of course, you know, Tom O'Brien, he, uh, you know, runs his newsletter and everything. We've been looking at gold a lot, right? And, uh, Direction has, of course, Nugget, which is a three times um, uh, long, and then uh, Dust as well. And so I'm kind of curious what you guys are looking at with that. Obviously, gold has had this kind of, you know, I would say in recent times, uh, meteoric rise, uh, which has been fantastic for all gold holders. And, you know, Nugget has returned pretty fantastically for that whole run. Let's take a look at the chart here as well. And this is on a one-year. I mean, we're trading up three, you know, 38, 28 right now, up 2.9% for the day. And I mean, seriously, look, right? This is May 1st of, you know, excuse me, March 1st of uh, the beginning of this year. And then we've just seen it really, really kind of follow gold on the way up as well. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Uh, gold has been kind of, uh, you know, earlier this year hitting all-time highs. 
Um, and, you know, uh, another thing that has really impacted uh, as of recent is uh, kind of some geopolitical conflict uh, going on in the Middle oh. East right now. Um, kind of that flight to safety trade, um, especially in the gold. And as you mentioned, our you know we have uh, you know uh, leveraged gold miner ETF. So not the actual physical gold, but uh, the gold mining equities. Uh, Nugget and Dust are two X in the gold miners, and then we do have our junior gold miners two yes. X funds as well. J N U G J Nug and J D S T the inverse there. Um, so, no, definitely, um, you know, we've seen gold uh, or the gold miners lag at gold just a little bit. Definitely. But with, you know, the spot price going up, it usually they follow really closely behind. So, Elliot, thank you so much for joining us. This has been fantastic. And uh, we're looking forward to hearing from you soon. Yeah, Jacob, thank you for having me. Fantastic. Take care now. And folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors tigers we have some exciting news live trading fridays are here join larry pesavento every second and fourth friday of the month 9 a.m to noon eastern time as he places short-term trades and gives insights into his strategies that's right that means the first live trading fridays event starts this friday april 12th make sure to sign up so you don't miss the potential for huge gains if you've attended Larry's stellar webinars before, you'll be familiar with the live trading portion. Live trading Fridays will be strictly this portion. That's three hours of pure trading. All trade positions will be communicated clearly, and all questions will be answered in a timely fashion during these live events. When signing up, make sure to save $50 by using code LARRYLIVE at checkout. This code is valid only for this month, and the discount stays with you for as long as you're a subscriber to the service. So don't delay. Sign up, sit back, and follow Larry Pesavento as he places trades live. See you there, Tigers. This portion of the Tom O'Brien Show is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. <laughs> 
Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Schubert filling in for Tom O'Brien. So we just had Elliot Wellenbach on from Direction, which was an awesome interview. Uh, check that out. We have the archive. We'll be uploading it uh, by the end of the day. What we didn't get to talk about, um, and these are leverage ETFs that I do like quite a bit, um, and the ones I have like some pretty good familiar interactions with, is uh, Gush, for one. So this is the two times uh, leverage bull. And uh, th this, this fall is basically oil, right? So we obviously are down today. The inverse of that, which is going to be the bearish one, is drip. We can talk a little bit about going forward what's happening with that, up 1.83% uh, today. So what has happened? Why is oil going down right now? I mean, I thought I've heard everything about the Yemenis, uh, you know, helping Iran bomb Israel and Israel having a retaliatory strike. Uh, so we can look at this a little bit essentially, is earlier on Wednesday, the Energy Information Administration released its weekly inventory report showing about, excuse me, uh, showing a build of 2.7 million barrels to 460 million barrels in the week ending April 12th. Expectations based on a Reuters poll had only been uh, for 1.4 million barrel build, causing oil prices to plummet this whole thing. Uh, essentially, we have extra stockpiles than uh, what, you know, was initially uh, thought is pretty good and i think going forward this is really what you're seeing too with america trying to position back into you know bringing chip manufacturing here and protecting ev makers and everything right this is kind of a restructuring away from like what we were doing the past few decades into you know one i i, I think just creating more jobs for people in our nation which the population is going up um but then second it, it's kind of like an insurance policy we saw Oh, how was it like in COVID essentially, right? When we had so many goods that were made outside of the nation and that, that had major impacts. These are minor, I say minor, these are just temporary supply chain disruptions, uh, but they're supply chain disruptions nonetheless. And it brings in a greater question, you know, what happens if, if you know, the end of history isn't here and, and things continue to happen? Uh, say China invades Taiwan and now we don't have access to these certain kind of chips or whatever. <clears throat> and so, you know, I think America is pivoting that way as well. We've seen um, how Saudi Arabia can try to influence uh, America or punish America or whatever by restricting the amount of uh, oil they, that they put out. And so, you know, I, I see at least this increase in production of oil in the U.S. and, and that's only going to uh, increase, I would say, going forward as kind of like an insurance policy against that. And I, and I think, too, it, it reasserts us as economically dominant uh, in the world, especially at a time when China is, um, you know, becoming relatively sophisticated um, o o away from, you know, what it has been uh, in the past. Anyways, that's my two cents on that. I'm going to talk a little bit uh, more about Eli Lilly. It is, these guys have hit the, <laughs> the jackpot with Zetbound, okay? So I was talking earlier with um, Elliot Wellenbach of Direction, uh, basically about Cure, which is their, their leveraged ETF, um, bullish uh, for, for the healthcare industry. Eli Lilly makes up about 11% of that. Eli Lilly is trading something like 700 and like, what was it, $49 a share. <clears throat> this, of course, was with their weight loss drugs that bound. Um, everyone loves this kind of stuff. That's what sent that price, you know, meteoric, essentially. Eli Lilly's weight loss drugs that bound shows promise as a sleep apnea treatment in late stage trials, which is, I mean, talk about, you know, again, hitting the jackpot with a certain drug. I mean, not only does it, you know, decrease weight, which is obviously a huge issue in the developed world, uh, weight management, and I, I think at least for Medicare, it's only been validated um, for, you, you know, if it helps with heart disease and everything. Uh, however, this with sleep apnea, it'll be interesting to see if we can have an off-label use uh, for this, essentially. Eli Lilly said on Wednesday that its popular weight loss drug, ZepBound, showed the potential to treat patients with the most common sleep-related breathing disorder in a late, uh, in two, excuse me, late-stage clinical trials. The initial results added a long list of potential health benefits of weight loss and diabetes treatments, which have skyrocketed in demand over the last year, despite their high prices. So really, this is going to be the thing, right? Like anything that is directly caused from weight issues. So, you know, like comorbidities or whatever, most likely they're going to be treated by a drug that uh, decreases weight. And so you're going to have all these label uses um, uh, kind of for this. Of course, it's not solving the you know sleep apnea itself it has to do with obesity but the problem we know in america is that obesity is uh really coupled with a lot of other uh, horrible things for the health 
And so I think Gazette Bound uh, gets, you know, in a, in a pretty good spot for that. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what goes with that. Under uh, new guidance issued in late March, Medicare can cover certain weight loss drugs as long as they receive FDA approval for an added health benefit. And so sleep apnea is going to be one of those. Uh, Medicare prescription drug plans administered by private insurers, known as Part D, currently cannot cover those drugs for weight loss alone. We'll see what happens with that. That is uh, pretty impressive uh, for that drug. There's another one too, uh, if I fill in for Tommy tomorrow, I'll try to make sure to look for it tonight. Um, but there was another drug that they were suggesting if it could be used uh, essentially with things like Manjaro or Zipbound and everything. Because one of, the, one of the major issues you run into with these obesity drugs is, is muscle wasting. And if you can have you know, some kind of compound uh, or drug you know, being taken in tandem with it that, that prevents that, I, I think also you know, that might end up being acquired by Eli or, or you know, be involved in that treatment uh, in some capacity which I think will be pretty neat to see going forward. I was talking a little bit about uh, some of our legislators and, and directors were talking about um, putting tariffs on China and especially protecting essentially nascent uh, industries, right? And EV is going to be one of those. And we can talk about how legit this problem actually is, um, especially when you're considering what are the work you know, what's the workload of the future going to be like for people in the nation? And so let's take a look at Volkswagen. Uh, they're aiming for lower EV costs with new production platforms in China. So this is going to roll out a cheap electric car production platform aimed at strengthening its stance in China. German car maker and China's uh, Peng partners in the country since last year. A new framework deal to co-develop electrified and digitized architecture to be used in Volkswagen brand EVs. Uh, that are produced in China, Volkswagen said Wednesday. Locally grown EV companies like BYD are challenging uh, foreign car makers, including Volkswagen, whose market share in the world's largest car market dropped last year. Uh, the streamlined production model will aid the German car giant's goal of reducing costs for its platform uh, by 40%, strengthening margins and making it more uh, competitive. And it remains to be seen, too, whether or not they will, the cars that are developed over there, whether or not they'll be sent out. Uh, of China, but regardless, uh, China is such a massive market, especially for things, uh, you know, like EV. Um, so I, I think that's obviously a good sign if you're a, a bag holder uh, in Volkswagen. Let's take a look at the video uh, right now. We'll take a look at it when we get back. Fact. We're going to take some time to load here. Turning down 3.77% right now, $841.33. That is off from 974, which is the high. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. 
At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Tom O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. Uh, looking at NVIDIA right now, trading at 842.49. That is off from the high of 974. And of course, you know, really the tech sector has been getting hit a little bit. Uh, but let's talk about this, right? And I'm saying this from the context of looking at NVIDIA, but really, in my opinion, this is a massive win for Google. They're not playing around, and we'll talk about why that is. So the big thing is that this was earlier this month, but NVIDIA and Google Cloud have announced a collaboration on generative artificial intelligence. Uh, the partnership aims to help startups around the world accelerate the creation of generative AI applications and services. The new initiative combines uh, NVIDIA inception with Google for a startup cloud program which aims to widen access to cloud credits, go-to market support, and technical expertise. Meanwhile, Google unveiled an A3 mega AI processor using NVIDIA's H100 technology. Again, that's what teaches the AI. And Google said it plans to use NVIDIA's next generation Blackwell platform in 2025. And then, of course, uh, Google is expanding in-house AI chip development uh, with ARM. So, you know, I, again, I don't think Google's playing around. These companies are solidifying themselves to really be the AI barons going forward. And I think the way Google's approaching this, and I've, I've spoken about Azure and AWS, and why is Microsoft and Amazon dropping billions of dollars into AI? It's because they want that stuff hosted on their cloud. Let's be honest. And Google uh, is no different. Uh, they, they, they really want people to be on the cloud. Now, this is going to be more for, as it said in, in what I just read, um, cloud for small businesses but the idea is we get everyone using it we got to get on the cloud no need to be storing things in your computer like on-prem uh why even worry about that if you're a small business owner and genuinely i you know i think the barrier to entry is just the the technical aspect uh, behind cloud right but it's getting so unbelievably simple i mean like azure even like the security you know what you what you have to essentially set up for security on Azure Cloud has been streamlined uh, so significantly. And this is what I see tech really going to, right? Um, we've seen it in user interface uh, for legitimately everything, right? I mean, even starting with the computer back in, you know, the 60s, where you had this blank terminal and you just told it to do commands. I mean, obviously computers are older than that. But, you know, let's talk about the first one that you can kind of recognize. And uh, as time has gone on, these user interfaces have gotten easier and easier to use to where your grandma can be on the computer and be on Facebook or whatever. And that's what I think all of this kind of tech stuff is going. And I think Google does that super well. Obviously, Microsoft does it super well, too. Um, regardless, what this AI is going to do is, is just really expand the cloud use. And so I think Google is kind of seeing that in a little bit. Uh, in some ways, and they want the market share of small businesses that don't have so much presence online. Uh, they, they want those people, and AI is going to probably help those people get that. Uh, pretty, pretty cool going forward to see what happens with that. I, was, I know I say that about a lot, but it's because I bring up stuff that I think uh, is super interesting is going to make a massive change. Um, let's see here. In the same kind of vein, uh, of course, you had ASML come out, and things weren't as good, so we can talk about that a little bit. Uh, ASML forecast semiconductor rebound after the first quarter uh, disappoints. 
So they say ASML uh, insisted the semiconductor industry was on track to recover in the second half of the year, even as its first quarter disappointed investors. Uh, obviously, these guys make lithography machines, which all chip makers use. It said on Wednesday that net bookings, which includes uh, orders placed by customers but not yet delivered, dropped to uh, 3.6 billion in the first quarter uh, from from 9.2 billion in the fourth quarter of last year. Analysts had expected bookings of more than 5 billion. ASML has been hurt by the semiconductor industry's slowdown, as well as sanctions curbing its ability to sell in China. Uh, Peter Wenick, which is a longstanding chief executive, uh, reiterated that he saw a 2024 as a transition year with trading improving in the second half as the industry continued to recover from its downturn. And let's just be honest, guys, like this is going to continue to happen. Uh, I love what what Basil says, and he, you know, he looks at the semiconductors as kind of like the new oil, right? Basically a benchmark of what is uh, the rest of the market going to do. And that's obviously fantastic um, for just analyzing what the market's going to do day to day, month to month, so on and so forth. Um, but also, I think what it really does too, at least, you know, in the context I'm talking, is it, is it underlines how important semiconductors are. I mean, if you guys watch the new Dune or you read the book, I mean, this is the spice, man. Um, in, in, in major ways, and the world's not going back from it, you know? So I, I think even though you're having these downturns, of course you're going to, because you have the companies who are gonna hop on and buy all this stuff and hoard it initially, and of course you get downtimes. But still, I think going forward, it's massive. Let's talk a little bit too with AI and what goes into that. You know, we talk about Bitcoin and the halving and you know what that means. Obviously more energy is gonna need to be going in uh, to solve the hashes to get the coins. Um, this whole new economy is running on this electricity. And I think a lot of that's one of the costs of doing business, you know, in, uh, in Bitcoin and crypto mining, but think about it as well with AI. And so this is pretty fascinating. Booming AI demand threatens global electricity supply. This is where you get this cool thing, right? And I'm saying this like an off topic, but like when you have this new innovation, this is where you have other innovation, in, innovation being forced to come into existence, right? Because I think if, you know, you're talking about like by 2030, uh, 15 trillion contribution by AI to the world, of course you get, you'll, you'll get systems that um, are more energy efficient and stuff like that. But this is where I start thinking that we see alternative uh, sources of energy or more mixed energy portfolio. I'm talking in the idea of like uh, uh, nuclear or something, but of course you can expand out with solar and everything. But regardless, let's look at this. Electricity supply is becoming the latest choke point uh, to threaten the growth of artificial intelligence. Uh, Elon Musk said this month that while the development of AI had been chip constrained last year, the latest bottleneck to cutting edge technology was electricity supply. And again, we have seen that uh, with big crypto miners as well. Those comments followed a warning by Amazon chief Andy Jassy this year that there was not enough energy right now to run new generative AI services. And as we're saying, you know, this is the new arms race, right? Who can create the best AI? Who has the best champion? You know, and obviously the champion is AI and we're going to figure out ways to give this the power it needs. Amazon, Microsoft and Google parent Alphabet are investing billions of dollars in computing infrastructure as they seek to build out their AI capabilities, including its data centers that typically take several years to plan and construct. Some of the most popular places for building facilities such as Northern Virginia are facing capacity constraints, uh, which in turn is driving a search for suitable sites in growing data center markets uh, globally. You know, I'd be interested to, it's just like a side point, it doesn't really matter, but it, this, this would be cool to see how, you know, different, let's say states, in America, because I think a lot of this is going to still kind of, I think because of legislation, it's going to be constrained to operations within America. Uh, obviously, it can go out, uh, but that will be uh, a different entity entirely. Uh, but it would be interesting to see how states can kind of fight uh, for who has the best, you know, energy. You're even seeing with Texas right now, you know, they're having major uh, supply issues, or excuse me, um, uh, grid issues. I think the American grid is weak. Anyways, my point is, I think all this is one problem, which is AI, right? It has the issue of energy, and this this just kind of dragnets everything else. So do we now, 10 years from now, start really seriously considering revamping our grid, which it needs to be done, because we have this strange patchwork in America we started developing before other people. Um, does it change the way that we look at energy supply and, and where we get energy from? And it's just crazy how one little thing like this can just totally change the trajectory um, for our country, which I think what I'm talking about, we'll start hearing. So anyways, uh, folks, be right back. Uh, we got a short segment coming up.
The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Uh, welcome back, folks. We have a short segment going on. I want to talk quickly about Amazon. They have that whole you know, just walk out uh, concept, which is a store, you go in, you pick up stuff, it scans you and you pay for it on there. There's uh, a hilarious headline that said that just walk out actually isn't run by AI, but it's a bunch of offshore workers just watching people on cameras and, and keeping tally. Now, Amazon came out and said that that's not entirely true, but just crazy anyways. Um, the, the, re the reason I'm bringing this up is because Amazon is also trying to, like, sell this tech to other people, right, to other stores. And, of course, you could kind of see that coming, right? Like, why does Amazon, does Amazon really want to get in um, to the grocery business? Of course, they, they did buy a grocery chain and everything. But in my opinion, this is much more of, like, obviously, they understand logistics, so that's one thing. Uh, but I can see them kind of hedging against it by creating new tech and testing it in those stores and then being able to sell that out, which is what they're trying to do with the Just Walk Out. Um, Regardless, it shows you that AI isn't fully there yet, right? Because you have uh, essentially workers. This is in India. Um, you have about 1,000 workers in India to watch people shop and review purchases at stores using just walk-out tech. The report claimed that Amazon workers uh, had to review around 700 of every 1,000 transactions in 2022. <clears throat> they said this is actually not uncommon in the world of AI. So that can go to show you that we're not fully there yet with AI. Um, and also not everything is as it seems. Uh, it was just kind of a funny headline. Um, for this next little short segment before we end out, uh, this was done by the Fed. 
me one moment. You know what? We'll save that uh, for tomorrow morning because we're having a fun time uh, with what's going on here. Let's talk a little bit quickly about UAL, United Airlines Holdings. If I can click the right ticker, of course, we can get a UI to do that for me or an AI. <laughs> Anyways, they're up right now. Uh, this smaller than expected quarterly loss uh, regarding Boeing said it won't default, uh, derail its full year guidance. That's something else to say too. Boeing is in uh, Congress right now for a hearing in the Senate. Um, so check that out later tonight because I'm sure that's gonna be super interesting. Folks, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, love filling in for Tom and talking with you guys. I hope you have a great rest of your day. We have standard programming tomorrow.